What's up, guys? You know who it is. We're doing our third video uh, recording for the night. So this particular video is going to talk about how to buy tools offline. So um, you guys know that I've been a fan of Highbit.com. So Highbit.com is a auction site. It's H-I-B-I-D.com. It's an auction site. You go on. You type in what you're looking for. It will show you all of the listings regardless of area and you can filter it down by area, by auction type, etc. You can get more creative, put more filters in there. Uh, but if you're looking for Snap-on or Cornwell or Mac or Matco, etc., you can type it in and it will bring you up all of the different various option or auctions that are taking place. Will it be within a few minutes or within a few months? It will have it on there. Um, I think the longest I've ever seen an auction being up there is like 30 days, meaning that it was like 24 days before the auction opened or 30 days before the auction opened. But you can filter it by minutes or whatever, uh, time ending soon or something like that, it says. Um, but what you want to do, right? So one thing I would say, if you're going to go out there and buy, let's say you're going to buy uh, Snap-on tools, right? You're going to buy Snap-on wrenches. What I want to say do is go on the website, look it up, see what auction houses are around. Make sure that you find out. It will tell you whether or not they're going to ship or no shipping is, is uh, offered. Uh, now, sometimes auction houses will say no shipping and it'll have a little button there that says contact auctioneer. I would say reach out to that auction house and ask them, says, hey, I live in Indiana. You guys are in Maryland. Would you consider shipping to my address in Indiana? They'll say yes or no, and you know what to do. But if they, if the, if the auction house is willing to ship, then you know, okay, you're in. All right. Now, what I would then suggest you do is you need to find out, like say, for instance, you want a, a wrench set. You're going to buy these, you see these double box and snap on wrenches on there and the auction is starting out at, let's say $5 or something like that. What I would encourage you to do is go out to eBay and eBay is my number one site for looking up prices. And so I will go out to eBay and I will look up this Snap-on set. Hopefully they have one and I will look at buy it now. So basically buy it now is going to represent getting the item as soon as possible with the least amount of interruption. So I look at the buy it now price and say, okay, these wrenches on eBay are being the cheapest I can find them is $180. Okay, great. So now I know that that's my number. So am I okay paying 180 bucks or less for those wrenches? Yes or no? If you are, okay, you're now ready to proceed. So look at the amount of time that's remaining on the auction. Let's say, for instance, it's you know, three days. Well, don't go putting your max bid, bid in at that point in time. Put a starting bid on there so you can track it. Because once you place a bid, whether you are leading a bid or losing the bid, it will show up in your menu of something that you bid on. And so then you can say, okay, now um, I've got it on my list, whether I'm losing or winning it, and I can kind of track it. And I'm going to tell you to go back over the course of a day or two and kind of see what the numbers are doing. Now, certain brands, names, et cetera, are going to obviously draw more attention. And Snap-on is obviously one of those names. So people are going to be looking for Snap-on stuff. So there will always be, for the most part, I can tell you probably count on one or two hands whereby uh, I really didn't have any competition for Snap-on tools. Most of the time, there's competition. So you're going to want to check it as frequently as you possibly can in order to see um, what the competition is doing. And so once you get down, let's say within the last 24 hours, you really want to really watch it. And I would suggest not bidding until the day of. And the reason that is because I don't really trust everybody to be 100% honest on auction sites, meaning that if I'm selling the items on auction, I'm not the auction house. Let's say, for instance, I'm doing a I'm, I'm liquidating my business and uh, I put my items up to this auction house to sell it on my behalf. I don't know if the person putting the items up for sale has the ability to bid on an item for which they are turned for which they have an auction on this website. I, I know I'm struggling to say that, but it's also two o'clock in the morning. So because I'm cons I'm weary and I don't trust anybody. Um, I would not put in any major bids until the day of the auction. So 
once the oxygen has come up, the day has come up, you want to check on there like, let's say, an hour or so before the auction, probably like two hours before the auction. Then you want to start considering whether or not you're going to bid. Um, I would not hold off bidding to the very, very end because I feel like people get anxious at the very, very end. And if they start seeing a bunch of bids flooring in, they either overbid um, most of the time they overbid and the item ends up going for more money than what it should. So I would kind of just hang back, but keep a close, close, watchful eye on it. And then as the time starts to dwindle down, then you can make a decision as to whether or not you're going to start entering some bids in there. Right. But in the back of your mind, always remember what you are willing to pay for an item. Do not go over. Remember, these are just inanimate objects and they will come and go and it, you don't have to uh, sell your soul to the devil just to get a snap-on tool or snap-on tools, right? So if you miss out on the auction because the item is going to go for more money than what you want to pay, let it go. Check again in a day or so because it'll be back again. You'll see this, the same item back again for a better price, maybe closer to you um, and a much you know easier auction group to much easier competition to go up against <clears throat> so um just make sure that you do that don't like i saw some wrenches today these were i've been following them for a while they were craftsmen these usa i love these stubby wrenches these are probably one of the best most well-made wrenches that craftsmen ever put out and these are usa and anytime i see them i try to buy them um i wanted the metric set but when I was, I followed it for like the last four or five days and the day of the auction, these things went from like holding it like $8 and it shot all the way up to 50. 50 was probably a decent price to pay for these. But in my mind, I didn't need to, even though they're metric and I already have snap on because I have the snap ones down here. I said that was more money than what I wanted to spend. And I would have liked to have paid like maybe 20 or maybe even 30 bucks for them as opposed to 50. So I was willing to let them go, even though I knew that I really wanted to own them. You may say, why? Well, because I'm a tool nerd and I just wanted to have the metric set to go with the SAE set. No really other reason <clears throat> other than that. And so I was willing to let them go because I wasn't gonna sell my soul to get those wrenches. Uh, so you have to know what are you willing to pay in order to get what you want? And I will stick strictly to that, right? Um, the other thing that you can do outside of just simply highbit.com, <clears throat> you can also check out Facebook Marketplace, right? And I know we're all grown men and women here. I know a lot of people are afraid to buy something online because they don't quite understand it, which is why you have people like myself that explain to you how to do it. <clears throat> so with Facebook Marketplace, Find an item, once again, do your research, make sure you know what to pay for it, and always, always negotiate. When you're doing business to bi person to person business, always be willing to negotiate. So if a person is asking, let's say $100 for something, you know, figure out what you're gonna offer. Don't come off as an idiot, but like I'll pay you 25, that's not gonna get you the item, that's gonna piss them off. Make a reasonable reduction in cost. Say, if they're asking 100 maybe say, all right, you know what, I, you know, um, would you take $80 cash or $75 cash, whatever you think is reasonable. But also at the, in the back of your mind, know what the item is valued at, know what its use value is, so what you can get it for immediately off of a site like eBay, and then make your offer accordingly. You got to be smart in how you negotiate these things, right? Um, one other thing you can look at on Facebook Marketplace is how long the item has been listed for, right? So if it's been listed for a long time, that person's probably more apt to want more apt to wanting to sell it as opposed to hold it for any longer duration of time. So if it's been on a month or so, maybe you can risk taking it down to seventy dollars because it's been on there for two or three months, and that person hasn't been able to move it. So looking at that helps it as well. <clears throat> make sure that when you go meet somebody, um, you take somebody with you or you take something with you. You know what I mean by take something with you. Make sure that you protect yourself. Make, to, make sure that you go somewhere that is, you know, well lit and that you're in a public place so that you're not meeting in a black alley somewhere in Gary, Indiana. 
make sure that you're somewhere where if some shit goes down, you're, you're okay to take care of yourself and you can get the hell out of there. Um, so just be smart because there are crackheads out there and people will take your money and try to do something that we don't want to have them do. Uh, but just make sure that you're dealing with, you know, understand that not everybody's saints and that you're going to run up against some weirdos out there. I've not had anything like that happen to me specifically, but I've always been ready and prepared. And if so, if something were to happen, I made sure that I was uh, ready to, to, to take the appropriate action uh, should appropriate action be necessary to take. Um, and, and that's, I've been fine on it. So, um, just be smart about that. Just consider those things. Those are inherent risks when doing person to person or peer to peer buying, as opposed to buying something off of, uh, like an auction site. But those are great places. Obviously there's other places like, um, pawn shops. Some people have mixed feelings about pawn shops. You know, I know that, you know, this all oh, where's that person ever paid that tool bill and they probably scrapped them tools out. And there's a tool guy out there who's hurting for money or that didn't get paid on them. Well, I mean, you know, you're not going to know that one way or the other. So, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, are you going to buy it or not? So if you want to go buy it off the truck, by all means, go buy it off the truck. I'm not going to tell you wrong. I'm not going to tell you anything on that. You know, do what you got to do to make you feel better. But for those of us, I don't really give a damn where you got it from. As long as you didn't go rob an old lady for it, um, I'm going to buy it if I want it. So uh, let's be honest about it, right? So uh, in that case there, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to deal with someone uh, off of like Facebook Marketplace or, 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 or a pawn shop or whatever, right? Um, you know, you can do it that way as well. There's also estate auctions and estate sales and, uh, uh, you know, things like that where you can go in in-person auctions as well. And you can go there and, and find things that you want to try to bid on and buy. Um, but those are all alternative uh, ways to buy tools. And, I, and, and for me, I've built, for the most part, I've built my entire setup um, off of that of that way, right? So there's obviously a lot of people that know me know that I had a fantastic once in a lifetime lifetime opportunity to buy out uh, a retiring Snap-on dealer, or buy tools from a retired Snap-on dealer. Um, that was a that was something that not most people will probably never experience in their lifetime. But unfortunately, God blessed me with an opportunity to do that. And so that is why I have more tools than what most people would probably understand. That's why I have as many ratchets as I do and things of that nature. Not because I'm a uh, collector per se, but rather um, I'm a collector per se. And that's how I was able to get what I got. Yeah, I, I said that on purpose. Um, but nonetheless, that's how I built my collection. A lot of this stuff is used. A lot of this stuff is purchased secondhand, thirdhand, stolen hand, or whatever the case may be. But uh, that's how I built my setup. And I'm pretty damn proud of it. So I hope you guys found some interest and some value into what I said tonight. I uh, hope you watched the entire video. That's awesome if you did. Uh, and if you have any questions about how to find tools and what to do, or if you are still a little bit hesitant to buy something online and you want uh, Midwest to review to help you out or, or, or whatever, let me know. Um, I do a lot of stuff like that too. Uh, I will go out and search for certain tools for people and make the buy and then do the sell to them. So um, that is an option as well. Um, but you know, just let me know what, you, what you're thinking. Let me know what you, what you find on this video if the, if the content was beneficial for you, uh, and then we will uh, go from there. <clears throat> okay, that's all I got for you guys tonight. That's my third video I'm recording, so I'm going to release these videos day by day, and hopefully we do our 30 day, 30 days, 30 for 30 videos. So one video per day for 30 days. So, all right, guys, I'm tired. Going to bed. Say good night, Shopcat. He says good night. All right, guys. Peace.